request others hello. to switch up their videos yeah hello good evening good morning everybody uh, i am vidya savri manavikar i would like to welcome you all to the car global webinar research series car council for ayurveda research is an international non profit organization based out of usa with a sister chapter in india by the name aaaf ayurvedya anusandhan abhiyan foundation our mission is to encourage educate and facilitate basic clinical and interdisciplinary research in ayurveda our vision is to promote and establish ayurveda as an evidence based health science globally you can learn more about us at www.ayurvedaresearchusa.org please do consider joining us as a member which will bring you access to all our resources no non profit can operate and uh, succeed without volunteers so consider joining us as a volunteer and we can place you in a variety of projects based on your skills and your interest once again our website is www.ayurvedaresearchusa.org now i would like to introduce our eminent speaker uh, <clears throat> dr ashwin savant ji so he is bams uh, from shet rv ayurvedic college sayan mumbai he has done ma in sanskrit for from mumbai university as well he has done mba in healthcare services from smu and he has also done phd from mumbai university on the subject hygiene in ancient india he has written more than 3000 health articles published in various newspapers magazines journals and calendars he is the only ayurvedic doctor who has done research presentation in the indian science congress organized in mumbai university in january 2015 on the subject advances in surgery in ancient india he is invited by many institutes to speak on health and ayurveda related subjects he has done around 25 live tv programs and participated in discussion on various health topics he has done seven radio programs on various health subjects on akashvani mumbai marathi and all india radio hindi He has been awarded by Sandu Ayurvedic Company for his contribution on Ayurveda. His nine research papers are published so far in various journals. Nirogi Mulund is a successful program. Uh, Mulund is a successful program of health symposium of experts lectures organized since some years. for public awareness in his brain child he has achieved black belt in karate at the age of 38 and he is a regular yoga practitioner and advises yoga to almost all his patients of for various diseases he has uh, published books <clears throat> one of the books is diabetes in marathi madhumeha viruddha aapan published and forwarded by honorable dr sanjay ok sir which is very well appreciated and now it is also going to get translated into english gujarati and hindi languages his forthcoming books are rutu samhita uh, <clears throat> which is about uh, prachin and arvachin rutu charya and on these subjects he has written more than 1200 uh pages uh, which is in six different chapters and uh, there is also another book which is apan zad ka hote so he has keen interest in studying basic ayurvedic concepts he is very very passionate about ancient indian sciences and practicing in mulund as his own shashwat ayurvedic clinic let me welcome you dr ashwin samant we would love to hear your thoughts
नमस्कार थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर आशा वेरी फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड द वर्ल्ड टीम ऑफ ग्लोबल आयुर्वेदा रिसर्च काउंसिल सो टुडे सब्जेक्ट इज वेस्टर्न फूड फैड एंड फैक्ट्स this is the population of india today we all know that now we are the first country or the country which is having maximum population in the world and it is around 140 crores now at one hand this population is a problem but at another hand this excessive number of people can be a strength of a country and our beloved prime minister modi ji is proceeding towards making this country the strongest country in the world and this country can be strongest if citizens of the country are strong and citizens of the country can be strong if they are fit and healthy what is the present scenario present scenario is not good we all know that india has become the kingdom of diabetes we are considered as one of the obese country in the world and as obesity is the base of almost all modern lifestyle diseases from cancer to stroke to heart disease to hypothyroid so how can we be the strongest country in the world if citizens are not healthy and fit and how can we achieve that how can we become healthy that is the chapter that is the subject today so what are the causes of this various illnesses various lifestyle disorders various autoimmune diseases and overall illnesses overall diseases overall disorders if you see according to ayurveda these are the root causes of various illnesses unhealthy daily regime unhealthy seasonal regime unhealthy exercise unhealthy food and diet wrong behavior and wrong thoughts each subject has its own dimensions if we want to talk i we can discuss and talk on each and every topic for weeks together because each subject has various dimensions and we need to think on every topic but today we have restricted our subject to unhealthy food and diet so we all know that if health and nutrition is good that only can create a healthy body it's a simple logic if your food is healthy you are healthy and that answer of healthy body is in the healthy food and that healthy food is found or it has been explained or it has been persuaded that western food is the most nutritious food in the world it may be true to some extent since it gives you more calories and to some extent it gives you more proteins we can say that it is nutritious but this is the one side of the coin what is shown by westerners scientists and western doctors or nutritionists that this is the one side of the coin what is the another side which is not shown or which is neglected ignored or we haven't thought about it we haven't seen it and that is the subject of today's presentation that what are the facts behind the western food so before going ahead i would like to present you what is the definition of food there are various definition we know that food nourishes the body but ayurveda or the indian tradition has given one unique definition adyate atti cha bhutani tasmat anna muchyate what is swallowed by human beings is food but at the same time do not forget that what may engulf you is also food so if it is proper if it is eaten in a healthy way if proper guidelines are followed food will definitely nourish you but if not if it is incorrect it will definitely become a cause of illnesses and cause of early death that is that is what is uh, written in this verse of tatri upanishad so let us go ahead 
this is a very common proverb i should say saying that breakfast should be like a king and your lunch should be like a prince and dinner should be like a pauper so every person should eat a very heavy breakfast it is true but question is this that this is applicable to whom who should eat early breakfast who should not what you should eat and when you should eat these are the questions which we need to ask whoever gives you advice that early breakfast is a healthy regime you must eat early breakfast or a healthy breakfast and it should be a heavy breakfast just like a king what does ayurveda advise ayurveda says what should be your first thought when you wake up in the morning swastho rakshartham ayushah jirna ajirna nirupayan a healthy person after waking up in the morning should first thing whether the food which he consumed last day in our case i should say last night whether it is digested or not this is the point this is the time at this point at this time if you think that the food which i ate yesterday if it is not digested then you should think whether i should eat today or not if i have to eat what should i eat whether i should be today on liquid diet or i should be today only on fruits and i should not take normal food and if i am really hungry and my hunger is good my appetite is good my digestion is good i am feeling light the all symptoms which are say that your agni is normal your appetite digestion metabolism is normal then and then only you should eat early breakfast healthy breakfast or heavy breakfast this saying that breakfast should be like a king is not applicable to all <clears throat> there are many people who do not get hunger in the morning they do not have good appetite they should not eat at all if you are obese if you are diabetic <clears throat> if you are a case of hypothyroid you should not eat early morning breakfast if you are mainly of a kapha prakruti that is those who are healthy those who are hefty those who are fatty those who have excess fat in the body and the blood they should not eat early morning breakfast so <clears throat> any advice which is given by modern science is not applicable to all we cannot say that one guideline is applicable to various types of people who who are having different types of lifestyle different types of types of constitution different types of food they come from the various regions their exercise may be different their overall sleeping pattern may be different so considering various dimensions of your body and of your constitution your food and diet guidelines should be adopted okay <clears throat> so which is considered in present 21st century as the healthiest breakfast this is the present picture various breakfast cereals as considered to be the best healthy breakfast is it true this is a fad and what is a fact <clears throat> this breakfast cereal is the healthy food is the comment or i should say uh, opinion which was given by fred stair who was a founder and chair of the department of nutrition harvard school of public health and this reference you can found in good calories and bad calories by gary top page number 52 as we have said and we have claimed that this presentation is evidence based i am giving you references that this was a time when slowly breakfast cereals were introduced in various asian countries dominantly china and india now what is the fact <clears throat> in 1950 it was observed that americans were becoming obese now the picture which is seen in india it started in usa in around 1950 1960 and it was seen that people were becoming fat they were becoming obese and the reasons were they were con consuming more of fat and the overall intake of cereals was less this is the report which is given by department of agricultural statistics of usa and culprits was what was considered that there is intake of cereals in americans is less and for this reason 
they should increase the intake of cereals. Now, first question is this, is this applicable to Indians? Of course not. At least thrice a day, we do consume cereals. Gehu ka roti hai, chapati hai, bhakri hai, paratha hai, idli hai, dosa hai. Various types of uh, foods are there, which are considered at least thrice a day by Indians. So, whether this foundation question, basic question, whether Indians do not eat cereals and hence they need breakfast cereals is not applicable to Indians at all. This was applicable to Americans and hence they thought that we should advise Americans to eat cereals in more quantity and hence cereals were introduced. Now, if you see what is the present cell in millions in the year 2021 of various countries, right? And what, how they wanted to improve this business. If you see, this has got nothing to do with commerce. This is nothing to do with health. This is nothing but a commerce. This is nothing but earning money. And this is what Americans and Westerners are doing since last two centuries. We can see this is the report of market statistics, which says that recent increase in the consumption of breakfast cereals has increased in Vietnam by 47%, in India by 39%. And this is the scenario that so slowly, gradually, they want Indians to eat more and more breakfast cereals just so that their overall market of breakfast cereals will increase. This has got nothing to do with your health. And to fool Indians, overall Indian color was given to breakfast cereals. Since Indians are fond of almonds, they think that almonds is the best food. So small pieces of almonds are added. Indians like resin, manukka. So resins were added. Flavors were changed. And this is how we were fooled and told that breakfast cereals is very healthy. Breakfast cereal is very tasty. What is the fact? <clears throat> this cereal undergoes almost 13 procedures. So this is a processed food. This is not natural food. You can see that grinding and boiling and mixing, cooking, extruding, puffing, drying, pulling, packaging and some other procedures are there. This is a completely processed food. This is not a natural cereal. We Indians do eat natural cereals. We do not need breakfast cereals which is artificially processed food. Okay, I accept it. You can eat it once in a fortnight. But it should not become a daily uh, breakfast. This is the content of various, uh, content of sugar in various breakfast cereals. You can see from 1 gram to 33 grams. If you see the carton over there, you will come to know, you can find one thing is carbohydrate. On some packages, clearly sugar is mentioned. In some, it is not mentioned. You have to find it out. And you will come to know that there is excess sugar in almost all cereals. And surprisingly, these cereals became main cause of obesity. So, the solution which was brought to reduce the obesity became the cause of the obesity. You can see here. In Britain, on 20th January 2015, the whole Britain, complete United Kingdom, people, TV, radio, national newspapers, through social media and researchers, all came together and they started shouting and they started telling straight to breakfast cereal product producers that you are the culprit of making our new generation obese. You can check it. This is how, how that cereal is so harmful for us. Here I'm showing you that how the growth, India's growth in cereal market is increasing year by year. 2015, it was 1440 crores, then 3495, 22, it is 4010. And it is estimated that it will grow to 
in to after two by uh, around two zero three zero, it will go to thirty thousand crores. This is the aim, and for that it is advised that every Indian should eat breakfast cereals if they want to become healthy. But truth is this: by eating breakfast cereals which contain sugar, which contain more sugar, will make you obese, will may invite diabetes. Not only that, considering its various processes, it is not a healthy breakfast at all. See, bottom line is this. And why should we select or why should we go for breakfast cereals? We have hundreds of options for uh, as a breakfast. Just if you think of poha, 14 types are there. 14 types of various uh, dishes can be made made from the poa and these are these are the just just some pictures of some indian foods which can be eaten as breakfast but there are hundreds of foods so actually we do not need cereals and hence this is the message now see complex you know the gi or glycemic index is 81 to 133 which is not good for health it is not a natural food. It increases dryness in the food. Ayurveda has said that Snigdham Ashniyat, your food should always contain some fat. It should not be without food. It should never be dry. And breakfast cereal is absolutely a dry food which will increase dryness or rukshatva in the body which can be harmful for the body or various organs. It is an artificial food which undergoes several unhealthy processing and this can be applicable, breakfast cereal may be applicable to Americans or Westerners who do not consume cereals, who do not eat grains. In at least a day, we are eating at least thrice various cereals and various grains. So, bottom line is this, we do not need breakfast cereals. Next point is, which grain is healthy? Now, all over the world, there is only one grain which is considered to be most healthy and that is oats. Now, we all know that oatmeal, oat, we, I should say, modern Indians who are blindly following Americans or Westerners are almost daily eating oatmeal or oats considering that it is one of the best grain. Now, let us see what is the fact. Now, what are the points which or claims which are made about oats? Because it is said to be the best grain because low level of energy and longer period due to low GI or glycemic index is low. It contains high fiber it may reduce your risk of diabetes mellitus. It gives you um, uh, satisfaction. Your stomach is full after eating old oat. It lowers cholesterol because it contains high fiber. It contains antioxidants and it doesn't contain gluten. Oat become famous because it is said that it doesn't contain gluten. And almost one third of Earth's population is gluten sensitive some people do get hazards some people do not get the symptoms are minor but one third of the population is considered to be gluten sensitive or gluten, gluten allergic and hence oats is advised to be eaten by those people who are sensitive considering that gluten is uh, oats is gluten free what is the fact let us see negative side. First, there are various grains which are actually gluten free. Now, if you know most of the small millets, which in Ayurveda are called as Kshudra Dhanya or Kudanya, most of these small millets are gluten free. So, we Indian do not need oats, at least on the ground of uh, gluten. But let us see what is the fact about gluten also. Now, Wheat, barley, rye contain certain proteins which are called prolamines and which is known as gluten. 
and oats do not contain these prolamines. That is gluten. But definitely oat do not contain prolamines, but it contains a protein which is called avenin. And avenin may induce toxic reactions and it also cannot be tolerated. Now, this is specifically applicable to those who are not from the land of oats. Oats is not an original crop of Indian subcontinent, neither of Asia, neither of nor of Africa. It is an original habitat of USA, America, Australia and some Western countries, mainly Australia and USA. So it may be good for those people, but not for people from India or Asia, uh, other Asian countries. Because we cannot digest that avenin part. That gives problem to us. So the factor which is considered to be a positive part of oats, that it doesn't contain gluten, that is prolamine, but it contains avenin and that can create problem in the digestion or considering the allergy. One more thing, phytic acid contains of oats are high and this phytic acid in the oats can disturb the absorption of minerals from the food. So this is also one problem with oats. Next. Now here, not able to see properly. Can we bring this down? This is the overall glycemic index of various foods. So here you can see that instant oats glycemic index is 79. But compared to that, brown basmati rice is 58. Bajri, Bajrika roti, it is 58. So overall glycemic index point or factor which is considered to be a positive uh, uh, factor of oats is also not true when you compare them with Indian foods. And here, let me tell you, small millets are not studied well regarding glycemic index. So, uh, glycemic index of various Indian small millets is definitely low. One more important point considering glycemic index is this, that we Indians, we do not eat only rice. When we eat rice, there is sambar, right? And various types of curries. Along with that, there are two at least two types of vegetables. Along with that, there is chutney. So you mix all this together, which makes glycemic index very low. So when you are eating rice with sambar and curry or vegetables and chutney or say uh, you are uh, uh, what is called kuchumbar, your overall glycemic index goes very low, which is definitely beneficial for health. So this point is also shows that oat is not good for health. Now here we are saying what, what, just let me, wait. This is a phenolic acid contained and here also you can see that compared to oats, pearl millet or bajra which is the purely Indian grain contains more uh, particular nutrient compared to oats. Now, this is the vitamin E. Now, vitamin E contains of rye, rye and wheat is three to four times higher than the barley and oats. Now, where, where it is said that it contains antioxidant, vitamin E is one of the best antioxidant. But that contain of oats is also less when you compare them with uh, our uh, wheat. One more thing, that baking process of oats, that when you make oatmeal or various cereals uh, from the oats, that baking process decreases the content of vitamin E. So that this is also one negative uh, factor applicable to oats. Here you can see biotin requirement. Here, biotin requirement is shown, which is a daily requirement is 150 micromilligram. And compared to oats, various other foods are giving better biotin, which is one essential micronutrient. 
rice bran gives you 66 micromilligram, whereas oats gives you only 24. Now, one more thing, various nutrients which are said to be having in oats, oats possess these nutrients. But when you cook it, most of the nutrients are reduced. Here the picture is there in front of you. For example, fiber is said to be in oat bran 14.5. In oats, it is 11 gram. But when you cook it, it becomes 5.7 gram. Take a think about omega-3, considered to be a best uh, uh, fatty acid, right? Now, oat bran contains 14 mg and in cooked oat, it is 32.8. You take every anything, it, overall carbs, proteins, 16.3 gram. In oats, it is 16.9. But when you cook it, it, it is only 7 gram. And these are the research references which are clearly indicating that overall nutrients, nutrient content of oats are reduced when you cook it. So, question is this, that what do you get when you actually eat oat? This are the, again, vitamin A, you can see calcium, which is 54.5. When you cook it, it becomes 21.9. Vitamin K, which is 532, it becomes 201. Zinc, which is 2.9 mg, it becomes 1.2 mg. So, most of the nutrient from oat, when oat is cooked, are reduced. Here again, this is a reference from uh, phenolic compounds in cereal grains and their health benefits. And this is a uh, uh, one report of Cereal Foods World. World, And it is said that why should, I, the, my heading is this, why should we call it a best antioxidant grain? Because the tannin sorghum and black rice, tannin sorghum is nothing but jawar. Jawar and rice contains more antioxidant when you compare it to oatmeal or oats. Again, here you can see ORAC value. That is oxygen radiant absorbent capacity. This is, you can say antioxidant capacity. Antioxidant capacity when you compare of various grains. Now, see, oats is 1708, whereas jawar is 2200. Okay? Rice bran is 24,287. So, compared to Indian grains, ORAC value or antioxidant capacity of oat is very, very less. Now, this is the report. The reference is given uh, below, which says that what is the reason that overall oat milk consumption and oatmeal business has increased in China and India. And report says that the reason is that overall incomes in China and India has increased. And because people's awareness has increased, people are coming in contact with US people, people have started consuming oat, considering it as one of the healthiest food, which as we can see is not really true. So, Oat may be good for cattle, but oat is definitely not for Indians. As you know, oats was used mainly for feeding cattle to make them hefty, to make them of make them oversized. So you could get more meat. So if you apply this theory also, oats is going to make you hefty, oats is going to make you oversized. So we have to think whether we want oats or not. Indians have more than 12 studied grains and more than 12, 13 studied pulses. So we have various options. We need not eat oat. Obesity, as we all know, is a problem in India and all over the world. And India soon is going to be the most obese country in the world. Various reasons are there, but one among them is sugar. Now, here I have stated that we are in sugar 
production, our number is two, but in sugar consumption, our number is one. Here, I would like to give you opinion of one scientist who formed the National Institute of Nutrition in India. His name was Robert McCarrison. In 1921, while giving lecture in Pittsburgh University, he said that Indians do not eat sugar. And this is the reason why they are not fat and why there are not various diseases which are seen in Western countries and European countries. And he said the sugar which we need in America or we consume in America in one day, the sugar which is consumed by Americans in one day will be enough for the whole India for one month. This is what he stated in 1921. And the scenario has changed so much that now presently we are the number one consumers of sugar. And this is the main reason of obesity and various lifestyle diseases. What is the reason? What are the sources through which we get sugar? And one among them is chocolate. This again, as you know, this was introduced again by Europeans when they started searching for various countries and they wanted to invade various countries, they wanted to introduce themselves in various communities, various uh, uh, societies, they took help of the chocolates. This is how they used to enter in countries. One was chocolate and second was biscuits. And Asian and African population, they never knew what is chocolate. They never knew, they had never tested biscuits. So this soft and testy food, this Asians and Africans liked so much, which further became the cause of their losing their independence. And today, though we are independent, we are still dependent on chocolates and biscuits, and which has become the cause of obesity and various other lifestyle diseases. You can see here. How much sugar do we get from various chocolates present, presently available in India? Just see the table. Here I've written that third column is telling you how many grams does that top chocolate provides. And for a common man, which may be difficult, in last column I've written in red letters, that is nine teaspoonful. For example, dairy milk cell gives you 11 teaspoonful. Five star 11 teaspoonful. You would have never imagined that by eating one five star, you are eating 11 teaspoonful of sugars. I do, uh, go for uh, these lectures in various um, educational institutes. I keep one jar of a sugar over there and I invite any student from the audience and I tell him or her to eat 11 teaspoonful of sugar. They say, no, sir, we cannot eat. This is not good. This is unhealthy. Then I tell them that whenever you eat such chocolates, you are at least eating 9 to 11 teaspoonful of sugar. So, just think about it. These are various cold drinks or in US it is called, they are called soda or soft drinks. And this is again one food which was introduced by Europeans and Americans. 40-50 years back it was uh, considered by Indians that Coke is not good for us. So, for I think two to three decades it was not allowed in India. Ever since it is allowed from 1990 onwards, we can see that obesity has increased. Rather, I tell you, if there is any lean, underweight girl, she is very, very lean and looks emaciated and if you want to fatten her, just tell her to have one can of any soft drink shown here along with lunch or dinner twice a day and within four to six months she will become fat. It is so simple to become fat because it provides you lots of sugar. How much if you are thinking? Just look at this. For example, this maza, 
<clears throat> the advertise which is done by Katrina Kef. You know that. It provides you 13 teaspoonful of sugar. Same is applicable to Mountain Dew. Advertise which was done by Ruthik Roshan. Dar ke aage jeet hai. If you remember, it gives you 12 teaspoonful of sugar. One bottle gives you 12 teaspoonful of sugar. No actor, no celebrity will ever drink this soft drinks or this soda. But we all are advised to drink them. Which will definitely make you obese and which will make you diabetic also. This is a new fad in India, again introduced by Westerners, that beer is a sign of healthy and wealthy life. People think that if they do not drink beer, their life is not happy. But they do not know how much sugar they consume through beer. These are the packets over here. And each beer gives you lots of calories. Next is, what is the second culprit of India's obesity? Again, this is also is introduced by Westerners. Whenever they used to go to any African or Asian country in 1700, 1800 AD, they used to go to any community village and they used to give them biscuits or bread or chocolates. And Indians were so much impressed by this, but they didn't know that within a period of 100 years, this is going to make you the most obese country in the world. Look at this. There was a day when this was used by Westerners to change our religion. All they had to do was just to put one piece of bread in well. And it was considered as that well water is spoiled by bread. And whoever drank it or drank it became, he, he was considered to be out of the religion. And it was considered as a sin. Eating this food was considered a sin. And today scenario is this, that every Indian Almost every Indian in morning is eating this, this as a breakfast. How could we not become obese? Just imagine. Because I am giving you the picture of the various biscuits. The calories which you get through various biscuits. Even you can see that uh, what, what Mari, Mari is considered to be the healthy biscuit. That too gives you 5.4 teaspoonful of sugar. Which is around 27 grams. So, this is the, uh, the content of carbohydrates, calories. First is calories. Second is carbohydrates, that is sugar. And how much in teaspoonful. So, if you think that I am eating just 5 biscuits, that too gives you lots of sugar. And people eat morning, evening biscuits along with the tea. Here we slowly start understanding why are we becoming obese. This is one of the main culprit of India's new generation which has become centrally obese and diabetes has increased. Whatever people may say, whatever scientists may say, but this is a fact that after 1990, in last 25 to 30 years, India's, India's new generation became obese because of eating pizzas and burgers. Second culprit, burger, that was pizza. And here you can see how much calories various pizzas are giving you. And this is one more funny thing. This was the pizza 20 years ago, this was the size and this was the calories in which they were, it was providing. And presently, it is giving you, the size is, after uh, presently, it is giving you 850 calories. Here you can see how the size and calorie has increased gradually in last 20 to 30 years. Now, I need to ask all listeners or the whole community, 
why the size and calorie is increased? Is it because we work more? Is it because we exercise more? Is it because, because we are doing hard work? Is it because we sweat? Not at all. Rather, we should we know that these factors are not applicable to us now. We do not exercise. We do not sweat. We do not walk. We do not climb mountains. We do not swim. We are not doing farming. So most of the laborer works are almost gone from our society, from our life. Then why do we need high, uh, high size, large size? Why do we need more calories? Of course, this is going to make you obese. And of course, this is going to make you diabetic. There's again one more example here. Here I want to show you just uh, 250 grams of cake provides you 275 calories and gives you 42.5 gram of sugar. Do you know how much it is? 8 to 10 teaspoon. 8 to 10 teaspoon of sugar. And I remember when I was a child, we used to see cake maybe once or twice a year because it was not easily available. Now, if you think only about the Mulund, the suburb in India near Mumbai, there are around, I should say, around 50 shops of cakes. People have started eating cakes on every silly occasion. They just want excuse to eat cake. I, I don't say that we should not eat it. But on what account? If obesity has increased, if diabetes has increased, if hypothyroidism has increased, and not only that, we should understand that most of the people know its relation with various obesity and obesity-related diseases. But people do not know that, you see, it is also a cause of cancer. Cancer which is not related with tobacco and alcohol. Sugar is one main cause of various cancers. So if we want to stay away from cancer, we have to stay away from sugar. An apple a day keeps doctor away. Is a saying which states that apple is the healthiest fruit. Now what is the, whether this is a fad or and what is the fact? Let us understand. Here I am showing you, first column is of uh, calories and proteins. Second column is telling you how much nutrients are available in apple and compared to that, how much nutrients are available in Indian fruits. Just go through that and you will come to know that Indian fruits are providing much, much more nutrients compared to apple. Just go through that. For example, most of the people are deficient of iron. We know that. How much iron does apple provide? It is not even 1 mg. See, 0 0.660 mg. Compared to that, dry karonda provides you 39.1 gram milligram of iron, which is the only food available on earth which gives you this much natural iron. Anything you take, take calcium. Apple gives you 10 mg. Black grapes give you 130 mg. Dates gives you 120. So many uh, better options we have. When you compare up apple's nutrients with modern, uh, with Indian fruits, we can definitely say that various Indian fruits are 10 times better than the apple. This were the uh, macronutrients like carbs, proteins and fats and macro uh, minerals and these are the vitamins. B1, B2, apple doesn't contain at all. B3, 0. Vitamin C, 1. Only 1 mg. Vitamin C is the best antioxidant. 
the content of apple is 1 mg compared to that avala contains 600 guava contains 212 cashew apple contains 180 and manila mg contains 108 mg so almost all indian fruits contain 10 or i should say 100 times more vitamin c compared to apple still apple is said to be the best fruit and apple a day keeps doctor away now here again it's a orac value as i said antioxidant capacity in short to understand compare it see the apple with skin 2828 compared to that avla it contains 261500 this is the orac value of avla so it is the best antioxidant fruit available on earth So Indians have more than 49 studied fruits. Research had been, has been completed, 49 fruits. M many more are there, but research has been done on 49 fruits. And we can concretely say that we do not need apple. So an apple a day keep doctors away is not applicable to Indians. Here I would like to tell you one point regarding apple. That you ask any patient while taking his history that do you eat fruit? Most of them will say, Yeah, we eat apple daily, considering it as a must uh, one of the best, healthiest uh, fruit. But as we have seen, it is not fact, it is not true. One, one more point, according to Ayurveda, is this that apple is a natural habitat of cold region. So that coldness is absorbed by the apple one thing and dryness too is absorbed so whenever you eat apple you'll find that your stool becomes hard you'll become constipated so dryness is increased in the body coldness is increased in the body which is not good for health this also point should be considered while eating apple there are various factors which are negative when you think about indian's health genetically or geologically by environment and all but in spite of that indians are protected from these diseases and that their indians protective shield is vegetables we eat at least three to four vegetables a day minimum two a day and this is the protective shield of indians but at today's date which is considered as the healthiest vegetable in the world broccoli what is the fat? Is this a fat or what is it? or it's a well, let us know understand the fact. Again, here I'm providing you the table which gives you actual vitamins. Second column is telling you about the broccoli, and third is telling you or giving you idea about the various vitamin contents of various Indian vegetables. For example, vitamin A in broccoli is 623 micromilligram compared to that drumstick leaves contain 19,690. Amaranth, that is Rajgira, 8,340. Colocasia leaves, which are which are used to make aluvadi, which is a famous uh, Marathi uh, cuisine uh, dish, it contains 5,920. So, compared to broccoli, almost all vitamins are more in Indian vegetables. These are the iron contents or I should say mineral contents. See the iron which is an essential thing. Broccoli contains 0 0.73 mg compared to this amaranthus that is uh, one is mart and second is rajgira. Two varieties are there. 38.5 rajgira contains 18.4 Chavali leaves contains 20.1 and null coal contains 13.3. Almost, these are the prominent ones which I have mentioned. Otherwise, there are many vegetables which contain more iron compared to broccoli. Think about calcium. It contains only 47 mg, one of the ingredients which is required for the healthy bones and healthy teeth and healthy air. Right? But if you eat artificial calcium, it can be harmful for you. It can harden your arteries. The molecules or small particles of the calcium can get embedded in between the neurons, in between the nephrons of kidney, in between the neurons of the brain. 
but this thing does not does not happen when you eat natural calcium and natural calcium is available in abundant quantity in indian vegetables here you can see that potassium magnesium zinc you name any mineral and you compare the content with broccoli of indian vegetables you will find that indian vegetables are 10 times 100 times better than broccoli again here i have shown you antioxidant capacity or orac value of broccoli compared to other vegetables surprisingly unfortunately our indian vegetables are not studied so far regarding orac value but still you can see that many many indian vegetables have better orac value antioxidant capacity just think about peppermint or pudina leaves which are regularly eaten by indians as a chutney is having 1,60,820 ORAC value compared to broccoli, which is only 1,590. So, the message is this. Indians have 56 studied leafy vegetables, 44 fruit vegetables and flower vegetables, which are studied. Other than that, many are there. And so, we do not need broccoli and such European or American veg vegetables, which are said to be healthier than Indian vegetables, which is not true at all. Here, I would like to show you one more point, which many of you may not believe. Salad is healthy. If you want to become healthy, you must eat salad. Am I right? So what is the fact? We should not forget that we are not carnivores. Right? And our intestine is also not like herbivorous. So we are not like cow. So we cannot digest this in a raw form. This point should always be thought of before eating salad in this form. Just cut the carrot, just cut the radish, just cut the tomato and various other things. Indian method of making salad was this. And we have totally forgotten that. If I ask to Hindi siders, what is Kachumbar? If or if I ask Marathi young generation, what is Koshimbir? I think they do not know what is Koshimbir. Our ancestors were not fooled that they started making Koshimbir in this way. This is the method. This is the right way. This is the wrong way. You cannot digest this. It may be containing more fiber, but again, dry fiber is useless. This is the way. It should contain some curd. Again, some vagar is given on that. This is the method. This is the way of making or making it useful. Making it absorbable by body. Making it beneficial for the body. So let us not forget the ancient Indian method of making kachumbar koshimbir. This is the right way of eating raw food. Which cooking oil is healthy? Of course, you will say olive oil. Right? Best cooking oil in the world. Considering the study done of Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean people used to consume more of olive oil and hence it was said that this is the reason why heart disease is less in that region in those people. The fact was this, that this was not the only factor. They were the, they were the people who were eating less food. Most active people, most hardworking people, they never ate sugar. They used to eat fruits in a large quantity. They used to eat fresh vegetables in large quantity. These were the factors which were applicable to them, which made them healthy and which kept heart attacks our disease away from them. These facts were totally ignored 
rather purposefully neglected. And the fact about olive oil, it's not a fact. But this picture was created in front of the whole world stating that olive oil is the best cooking oil in the world. If you compare overall content or nutrient of olive oil with mustard oil, they are almost same. Mustard oil. See, why can't we eat mustard oil then? Now, regarding the India, or if you think, if you compare the states of Maharashtra, Gujarat and states below the Maharashtra, which are the South Indian states. These states do not use mustard oil, right? Whereas North Indian states like UP and Bihar and Jharkhand and Uttarakhand, they do use mustard oil. But Maharashtra, Gujarat and below, they do not use it because we can't tolerate it. We can't digest it. If in our own country, we can't tolerate mustard oil, which is basically from our Indian land. Then how do you expect you to digest the oil, which is uh, um, from the plant, which is available only in cold region countries, which is a habitat of cold climate, that is olive. You won't see a single crop of olive in the whole India. From Ladakh to Kanyakumari, you will not find a single plant. Nature itself is telling you that this is not for you. But you eat it because Americans say so. Because Westerners say so. Let us think, see what are the actual scientific facts. You won't be able to see it properly. So let me reduce it. Olive oil is compared with mustard oil, sunflower oil, sesame oil, coconut oil, and rice bran oil. If you see overall saturates, olive oil is 14.8, compared to that coconut oil is 89.5. Monounsaturated MUFA content of olive oil is 74.5, mustard is 56.0. Polyunsaturated, which is actually one of the healthiest fat, content of olive oil is 10 only. Compared to that, mustard is 32.6, sunflower 66.2, sesame oil 44.5, coconut oil 2.0, and rice bran 30.7. Again, there is one important point that is smoke point when it starts burning. When oil starts burning, it starts throwing vapors, fumes. That is the smoke point of olive oil is very less, that is 320 only. At 320 Fahrenheit, it starts throwing fumes. Compared to that, you can see that coconut oil is 350, rice bran is 490, and pure ghee is above 500. This is the reason why, I, why our ancestors have been using ghee for frying foods. Because smoke point is high. And if it doesn't burn, if smoke point is less, food will be healthy even if you fry it. Compared to olive oil, you can see the omega-3 is which is considered to be very healthy fatty acid is very less in olive oil when you compare them with other oils. Unfortunately, omega-9 fatty acid which is considered to be which may be a cause of cancer is in high quantity in olive oil. This fact is hidden, kept hidden from us. So, here are some facts about olive oil. It is a poor source of omega-3, which is polyunsaturated fatty acids. Again, reference is given here. And it is a good source of monounsaturated fat, as we have seen. But pork too contains more monounsaturated fat. Then are we going to eat pork? We do not eat. We consider it as unhealthy food. Then why not olive oil? Olive oil too is unhealthy. This is a reference from British Journal of Nutrition. 
complete reference is there in front of you. More MUFA you can consume, that is monounsaturated fatty acid, there is more risk of ischemic heart disease. And olive oil contains more of MUFA. Study showed that a meal containing olive oil reduces brachial artery flow mediated vasodilation by 31%. Research of Journal of American College of Cardiology. So when we think that olive oil is, oil is good, because Americans say so or because Westerners say so, research is saying something else. Olive oil meal impairs blood flow. Research presented by Vogel R.A. in American Journal of Cardiology. Atherosclerotic type lesions in rabbits were induced by feeding them olive oil and cholesterol. Research done by a Russian pathologist. Overall, we can say that olive oil is not an ideal cooking oil. Which options do we have? And rather, here I would like to give you one, show you one slide, which is of Dr. Stephen Nissen, who was a chairman of cardiovascular medicine at the Cleveland Clinic. And in CNN News, he said, that whatever we stated in 1952-53 about relation of food and cholesterol was not true. Ansel Key, who was considered, who is considered as the pioneer of the, all this theory, rather a hypothesis, which was not a scientific fact, we all know that there is no relation of food with cholesterol. It has been accepted by WHO also that it was our biggest mistake to state that food increases cholesterol. So if you eat particular food, then your cholesterol increase. This is not a scientific fact. There are various dimensions to this subject. I cannot say in one, uh, by showing you one slide, but let us understand what he means to say. The idea we need to limit saturated fat and cholesterol shifted Americans from a well-balanced diet to high sugar diet. What happened? Do you understand? Because it was uh, advised that you should not eat fatty food. People shifted their diet from fat containing food to sugar containing food because satiety is important, satisfaction is important. And if you do not eat sugar, you do not eat fat, fatty food, you will never get satisfaction. When food contains some fat, some oil, some ghee, some butter, it gives you satisfaction of fullness and the center of hunger is also satisfied. That is why Ayurveda said Snigdam Ashniyata. Your food must contain some fat. But when we stopped eating fat, we found another way of satisfying ourselves and that was by eating more sugar. And hence, people all over the world became fat. Which oil should be used in which season? This is Ayurveda. Ayurveda will tell you which oil should be used in which season. What food should be eaten in which season? That is the complete regime, complete program, complete guidelines given by Ayurveda, considering every dimension of human life. Almonds are considered good for health. It is a fact. But groundnuts are better. Groundnuts are better than almonds and sesame and garden cress seeds that is till and ahli are best. When you think about nutrient value or contains, you can see this is the chart in front of you. Almonds compared with sesame, garden cress seeds and groundnuts, see the various values. Proteins of almonds 20.8 only. Compared to that garden crest, 25.3, groundnuts 26.2. Important thing is iron, C. Iron contained of almonds is 5.09, sesame is 9.3, and garden crest contains 100 mg. This is the reason why in India there is a tradition of giving a paisam or a sweet uh, dish made from the uh, garden crest seeds, which is given to in, in after after delivery 
in first three months, this is given as a regular feed to uh, mothers, feeding mothers. And the reason is this. So I don't say almonds are not good, but we Indians have better options. And the reason why I'm saying is this, just compare the micronutrients. Zinc. Almonds gives you 3.57 mg. Compared to that, sesame gives you 12.20. Vitamin A content of almonds is 0. Content to that till or sesame is 60. Same with B1, B2. Everywhere you can see that. See, for example, folic acid. One of the essential micronutrient required for the production of sheath of the nerves. And content of almond of folic acid is zero compared to that sesame contains 134 micromilligram. This is the real picture. Now, why I am saying that we don't want almonds? Because since last 5-10 years, people have started saying that you should eat almonds and you should eat only California almonds. And this is how the commerce starts. This is how we start giving our money back to America and other Western countries. When we have better options, why should not we select them? Why should not we eat them? Indians do not need California almonds. Here I would like to tell you that India is a big country. This vast variation. And I, I just heard two days back from Sri Sri Ravi Shankar who said, that on one particular in one particular festival there were more than 5000 food dishes they were made and they were brought from all over the india which proved what is the variety of food available in india when we have variety of foods fruits vegetables grains cereals why do we need westerners foods and this is not restricted only to health. One thing I would have accepted if Western foods are really very healthy and very nutritious compared to Indian food. But this is not a fact. We already seen that. There are many more examples, but it is not possible to show it in one program. But this subject has got one more dimension that Britishers have left us. Britishers who looted us for more than two centuries they left us and the money which they took, we cannot bring it back. But in the same manner, still Westerners are looting us through these various Western foods. So we need to stop that. So this is my request to all listeners. So that Indian food is definitely healthy. So be Indian and eat Indian food. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for such a thought-provoking and wonderful uh, lecture and <clears throat> lots of references regarding different foods and why, right? Because the facts are really, really important. Definitely, we need to understand the fad, but also the facts really play such a big role. So thank you so much for this wonderful lecture. Thank you. Yep. I would like to request if anybody has any questions, any uh, listeners or, uh, you know, everybody who is in this webinar. Uh, you can unmute yourself or you can write your question in the chat box. Ma'am, I have got a question. I am from Pune. Mm -hmm. The use of jaggery and the curd or butter meat in our meat or gluten diet. Please repeat the question. I would like to know use of jaggery or buttermilk and curd in our regular diet. Yeah. Okay. So compared to sugar, jaggery is definitely better. We Indians are always deficient of iron and calcium. Two important nutrients, micronutrients. And... Uh, Jaggery contains both of this. So less it is pro processed, it is good. So it should be dark enough. It should not be yellow. It should be dark brown. It should be naturally processed. That is definitely good. 
बट अगेन इट शुड नॉट बी इन हाई क्वांटिटी मी मजा पुस्तका मधे एक वाक्य वाल दगड़ा पेक्षा वीट मऊ सो जैगरी टू कैन क्रिएट सम प्रॉब्लम बट कंपेर टू शुगर इट इज हंड्रेड टाइम्स बेटर इट वॉन्ट इन्वाइट कैंसर सो दिस यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड सो मेनली रिगार्डिंग टी नाउ पीपल दोज हु आर कंज्यूमिंग टी डेली आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू वन एक्जाम्पल दिस इज अ रिसर्च डन बाय वन हॉलैंड साइंटिस्ट वॉज अ बायोलॉजिस्ट वो प्रूव्ड बाय एक्चुअली प्रोड्यूसिंग द एनर्जी प्रोड्यूस द एनर्जी and he proved that only 3 cups of tea per day wherein each cup only 2 teaspoon full of sugar is added if you consume it for 365 days you will get 6.5 kg of fat 6.5 kg of fat fat this is how dangerous it is so i would say and this i have been stating since last 20 25 years that no less sugar i don't say less sugar i say stop sugar we do not need sugar at all so jaggery is a better option but again in a less quantity so which keeps your throat lubricated mm -hmm. and you get uh, some energy and uh, uh, considering curd now one thing i would like to give reference of some of my articles which are produced by which are uh, uh, published by kalanirne i have written two big articles one was on takram chakra se durlabham that uh, the, it is considered to be not uh, available to uh, lord indra but it is available to human beings and hence it is very very useful but it is not true takra or buttermilk if you are drinking regularly since last many years please go ahead it won't harm you but if you are not used to it then there are some rules again you will be surprised this is my observation of last 32 year 2 years practice that in particular communities who consume takra buttermilk in large quantity daily i have observed that their body become inflated it is not because of fat it is because of that water contained in the buttermilk which is not digested surprisingly this i started with jain community where i am practicing in mulund west 25 years back initially i used to always think that content of fat in buttermilk is zero the calorie given is just one so you don't get calorie at all so how can it fatten you how you can become fat by that but again there is one concept of ayurveda which says that if that water part water molecules are not digested properly by agni by your body they will be accumulated in the body they will be stored in the body and hence i started stopping their buttermilk initially that whole community was not ready especially kachi community and in our marathi community also particular people are not are consuming buttermilk in large quantity and surprisingly when i stop their buttermilk within some weeks their body is reduced without doing anything all of those patients whoever who may ever he may be or she may be when i advise them to stop buttermilk on first day they are so surprised and those so startled nahi 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 aise kaise ho sakta hai we can't stop this now you do it for 15 days 2 weeks and see the difference so if you are obese if your body is inflated if your body is edematous looks swollen your face body parts then please stop buttermilk and see the difference same is applicable to curd curd is a better option for vegetarians to give them good proteins natural proteins healthy proteins but again it is fattening one thing curd is ushna curd is not cold curd do not possess cold property dadhi ushna okay and curd is constipating so in various anal disorders which is one of my specialty people consume curd and rice having um, considering that i am having piles i am i am having fissures and they think that curd will be helpful for them but it is absolutely wrong 
one reason curd is ushna it will increase heat in the body and curd is constipating it will make your stool hard curd and see curd is a, such a big subject that i spoke on curd on g marathi 20 years back for one hour i spoke only on curd so <laughs> We are not able to hear you properly. I, I think, think there is a question here, here, which is about yeah, no. benefits of honey and daily limits. Mm -hmm. Benefits of honey. You are mm -hmm. starting such subject which is... <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, yeah. was, it means he, I can speak on honey for one hour so who should eat honey honey is for those who are fat honey is for those who are whose body is inflated who are oversized for them honey is good then you should not eat honey when hot season It's in, in summer you should not eat it it's Sharad Rutu or Grishma Rutu in October heat and summer heat, you should not eat it. Okay? It gives you a good amount of calories. So, compared to sugar, if you are eating honey, it is definitely good. <clears throat> if you have some diseases which are pitta related or excess heat related, you should not eat honey. Here, with one point I didn't mention there while uh, talking on Western food. You ask any modern nutritionist, modern scientists, modern doctors while they are talking on foods or western foods rather. Take example of olive oil, broccoli, almonds, oats, breakfast cereals, whatever it may be. Take honey. Modern nutritionists will always tell you what are the advantages of these foods. Modern nutritionists will always stress you are about the benefits or good factors of this food but they will never tell you what are the negative points of this food modern nutritionists will never tell you who should not eat it ayurveda is the only science which tells you who should eat it who should not eat it when you should eat it when you should not eat what are the properties what are the dis or bad properties ask any modern nutritionist about bad properties of almonds bad properties of oats, bad properties of broccoli, bad properties of breakfast cereals, they won't be able to tell or they don't want to tell. Rather, I think they haven't studied bad properties of any particular food. This is the difference between Ayurveda and modern science. Who should not eat it? And how, how did I start just now? Just see. I started telling you about who should not eat honey. Honey is nutritious, we know that. But honey is ushna, honey is hot. So, so many things are there some other day. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Ashwin. And uh, thank you everybody for attending the webinar. Uh, honestly, I would really like to say Ayurveda is so unique. And all of these foods, we have to look at our uniqueness. We have to look at our prakruti, our constitution, where we live what kind of rutu and that's how uh, Dr. Ashwin uh, Savant has actually written wonderful books on rutu charya. So that those will be definitely beneficial for, you know, everyone to read and use in the future uh, in order to add to, you know, your life uh, that based on those rutus or different uh, uh, seasons, how you should change your diet and lifestyle. So I will, I would just like to conclude here. Uh, and thank you so much again for everybody for attending as well as for giving time uh, to this webinar. And this recording will be available on our CAR YouTube channel. So you can definitely subscribe. You should be able to go through this as well as you should be able to look at other recordings also, which are available on our YouTube channel. So thank you again. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.